Welcome back fellow mobile gamers, it's Nimble Thor here and today I've got something really, really, really exciting to share with you guys. It is Dawn of the Dragons Ascension, which is a very interesting tactical turn-based RPG with a pretty cool fantasy theme and some of the most unique gameplay I've seen in a long while in a tactical RPG game. The game is also referred to simply as Dawn 2, since it's the follow-up to the first Dawn of the Dragon game, which released back in 2010 as a browser game, and it has over 80 million plays on browser games platform Congregate alone, so needless to say, lots of people are probably really excited about this follow-up, and I'm in the lucky situation where this game has actually been soft-launched in Denmark, which means I am able to do a video of it prior to the actual game release. I'm not getting paid, I don't know the developers even, but I'm quite excited for the game and I wanted to share it with you guys here today. Now we're going to talk both about what I like about the game, what I dislike about the game and whether or not I think you guys should check it out for yourselves. I have left the download links in the description box down below but you may not be able to download it depending on the country you live in and as far as I know as of right now the game is not out on iOS but it will of course eventually release both on Android and iOS. So we won the first match in this dungeon here. Let's head to the next section and I'm going to talk a bit about the actual combat system. So currently we have two characters in our team. Both have four abilities which we cycle through three at a time. So you guys can see down here we have three different abilities. We've got this guy's provoke ability which taunts for one turn and increases party's toughness by 50% for one turn and increases party's spirit by 50% for one turn. This is just a normal attack, it deals 690 magical damage, and this one here deals 161 magical damage. Now the difference is that this one can only hit a single enemy, and this one, as you guys can see when I drag this one out here, can hit many enemies depending on where I let go of my finger right now. So let's hit all of them right here, right now, because I know that none of those enemies will be able to attack us on the next turn. So that means that it's our turn again now, the opponents had their turn, they couldn't do anything, so now it's our turn already again. Now if you look to the left of each of these opponents HP bars you'll see a number and that number indicates when the opponents will be able to attack so what that means is that this guy here slightly to the left and this guy to the very right side they will both be able to attack us on the next turn so what I want to do now is to be sure to take out one of them with this really strong attack here dealing 690 damage completely obliterating that unit look at that so what do we want to do now then as you guys can see, there are three opponents that will be able to attack us the next turn. So what I like to do in a situation like this is to use this guy's stall ability, which deals 24 damage, which is not that important, it's not a lot of damage, but it also stops the timer for one turn on the opponents that we can target with it. So we can target two of them and make sure that we only get hit by a single opponent this turn, which would be the guy that just did an attack there on the very left side of the screen. So now we can do a mighty blow to these guys down here and hopefully yes that was enough to take out one of them completely we're gonna take two damage though but now we have a pretty good chance of i believe uh what do we want to do take out this one completely and then with a bit of luck we will be able to avoid any more attacks let's see i think we should be able to pull this off yes here we go the last enemy left and it is dead as well. So that was the next battle here in this raid we're doing at the moment. There's a boss waiting for us at the end, so let's just get to the third out of four different combat sections in this game. Now, we don't recover HP until we've defeated all of these opponents, by the way, so we have to be very, very careful, and that's the tactical part of this game. Now, the RPG part of the game involves leveling up our characters, and I'm going to show you guys that as soon as we're done with uh, this uh, raid that we're in right now. I'm also going to show you guys the quest system, which is the best way to get more gold that we can use to upgrade our characters. But for now, let's just see if we can win one more match here. Now, I have gone through this raid already once, so it should be relatively, relatively somewhat easy. I haven't lost yet, at least. But our mage character, which is the one you can see right here, has only 490 HP left, so there is a chance that she will die if we're not careful. Here, by the way, you can see all the four different abilities that she has. And if we click the warrior guy over here, you can see the abilities that he has as well. So with that said, let's just finish these guys off. Let's do a strong attack on this enemy here so that one doesn't get a chance at attacking us. Let's stall this guy and hope for a strong attack, hope for a strong attack. We did indeed get a strong attack and we can use that one to win without losing any HP whatsoever. That's pretty nice. So now we have a lot of HP going into the boss battle and we got some new items as well. That's pretty cool. We're not going to keep any of these items though if we die. So we have to be very careful and make sure that we actually win this match. Otherwise, we're going to lose all of that equipment. And we need the equipment for sure because the quest that we're doing at the moment requires our heroes to be a bit stronger before we'll be able to finish it. I died the last time I tried, attempted to finish that quest. So as soon as this match is over, I'm going to go level up my character. I'm going to go show you guys how that works. We're going to equip some new items if we found some new items that we can actually use. And then with that, we're going to go in and attempt to win the quest that I'm doing at the moment. So as you guys can see, we got a lot of different potions here. 
We got a shot. That's pretty nice. We need shots to summon new heroes. Uh, it's not a gacha system, but we need shots for individual heroes in order to unlock them. We got a few items as well, so let's go into our ally screen here and have a look at whether or not we got something that we can actually equip. Now, equipping items in this game is a very tedious and boring process. You have to click on each of these positions, for example, the offhand position, the pants position, before you can see if there's something that we can equip. But there was something we could equip there, and we also have a chest that we can equip, it seems. So now we pretty much have an item for every slot for this character here, except for the helmet and for the offhand. Now, I want to do the same thing for this guy, but he also has... Nearly all of his slots filled up already. Let's see if there's a belt. We did not get a belt though, so that is something we'll definitely be looking for in the future. And now, as you can see, we are able to level up our hero to level 6 by spending some gold, to level 7 as well, and we can even level it up to level 8 if we kept spending some of those potions, but I want to go level up this guy as well so the difference between the two heroes doesn't get all too big. So let's keep using some of these potions here again. Let's go back, let's spend some gold. Was that enough to level it up twice? It was indeed. So now both of them, level 7, with new equipment. I think we're good to go for the next quest. So let's just click the quest menu here and see what it is we have to do. Finish off the bandits and their leader in mercenary pass. So the mercenary pass, I believe, is up here. Yes, let's go in here. Right now, we need 1,400 in power level. I'm not sure we have 1,400 in power level at the moment. We have probably somewhere around that. But that's why I'm saying this is probably going to be relatively difficult. But this is what we do in the game. We go on raids, we grind all the levels for better gear, and then we equip that gear, we upgrade our heroes to become stronger, we earn gold by finishing quests, and then we just keep doing that over and over and over and over again. Is it tedious? Is it grindy? Yes, indeed it is. But for some players who like these types of games, this is a pretty cool game, actually. Now, there is also a guild system, but I haven't had any luck whatsoever finding a guild so far. I think that's because most of the guild aren't active anymore. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's because the game is in beta and some players don't have access to the game anymore and they don't play the game anymore because there are certainly something that needs to be improved in order for this game to become amazing. Right now, it's a fun concept, but the monetization is on the heavy side. But maybe we just haven't been able to join a guild because I'm not high level enough just yet. Two things to say about the monetization in this game is that, yes, there is an energy system. It's not an issue, though, but as you guys probably noticed already, we spend energy whenever we walk through these raids or these quests that we are doing. We spend about four energy for every combat we enter into, or for every time we move one step forward. Have a look at this, for example. You guys can see that it costs four energy. This is lightning bolt icon, and then it says four, which means it's going to cost four energy, and we have 60 energy in total at the moment. It's going to cost four energy to move one step forward, so let's do that right now. We didn't even have to enter into any combat, so that was just four energy completely wasted. Another 4 energy completely wasted, and let's move over here, that's another 4 energy completely wasted, but at least we do get to go into a battle, so at least we get a chance of getting some sweet items or some experience points out of taking that turn. But the energy system isn't the issue, though. The issue is instead that everything, nearly everything in this game, can be bought for premium currency. You can grind away and get new characters, but it will take forever if you don't spend real-life money on the game. So of course it is an option to keep playing with these main characters, these two that we have right from the beginning, but naturally eventually you will want to unlock the newer heroes as well and you can't really do that or at the very least you'll have a very hard time doing it if you don't spend money on the game. And that is frustrating. Potions can be bought for premium currency, so that basically means that you can survive forever. We died. Right now, as you can see, our mage died, so we're probably not going to be able to win this uh, win this quest even this time around. We probably have to go back and re-grind again and again and again. Or, you know, case in point, spend premium currency on the game to be able to buy some potions. And this really frustrates me. I feel like this game has so much potential, but the inner purchases, and hold on guys, they go all the way up to 350 US dollars. I've never seen anything like that in any mobile game whatsoever. 350 US dollars on inner purchases. I mean, that's just insane, isn't it? Is it just me? That's pretty insane, I think. We're definitely gonna lose this one, though, so let's just go back here, let's quit, let's retreat, let's get the heck out of here. Yes, we're gonna abandon whatever loot we had gotten from that first match, sadly. We did still get the gold, though, we did still get the experience points, but we did not get any of those items with us out of there. So, have a look at this, guys. This is where we can buy these premium metal bags, and the metals are what we need to unlock new heroes. And so, these cost 350 premium currency or 1,500 gold to get, well, 4 to 8 medals is what you're going to get for 1,500 gold. But if you spend just 350 premium currency instead, you're going to get 25 to 50 different medals. And of course, these gems can be bought over here, as you guys can see, just to prove that I'm not lying. <laughs> Look at this, 1,600 Danish kroner. Oh, wait, that's actually 200 US dollars. Oh, 
Maybe I was wrong then. Wait, on Google Play it did say, it did say 2,600 though. I'm pretty sure there are some in-app purchases that go all the way up to uh, 350 US dollars. But even if not, even if I was wrong, even 200 US dollars is a lot of money. It's an insane amount of money to spend on a mobile game. Hey, Nimble Fall from the future here. I nearly forgot to mention something about this game. I have no idea why we have a main playable character in this game because it's actually not playable. We have a main character as you guys can see, mine is called surprise surprise Nimble Thor and we can actually distribute skill points for this guy into strength, will, toughness or spirit which I have no idea whatsoever why we're doing because we can't attack with this guy and yet we can still equip items on him as you guys can see over here. He has a backpack which is just our inventory though so I guess that's kind of self-explanatory but we have bonuses and buffs as well but there's nothing in here. I just don't understand any part of the system. I don't know if it's because it hasn't been added to the game yet. Why can we upgrade this? Someone please explain to me what's going on here. You can see we can click confirm and now we only have one skill point left. It seemingly has no impact on the gameplay whatsoever so I'm guessing that you guys are probably laughing your asses off right now because I think there's something I simply have not seen yet. <laughs> But I just don't know why we have this main character and it leads into my overall rant or complaint about the UI in this game. It's kind of horrible and it's really not good at explaining the different gameplay elements. And for example, what does toughness do? I can kind of make a guess at it, right? I think it impacts the amount of damage we take, right? With more toughness, we probably take less damage, but I'm not sure. What about the will? What does will do? The will strength for Arabella, for example, is 461 plus 23, but what does that mean? Can I click this one to get to know more about it? No, I can't. Can I click luck to know more about what luck means? It probably means the chances of dealing a critical damage, but I don't know. I don't know though, and that's kind of frustrating. So please, someone tell me why we have a main playable character. I haven't been able to find any information about that whatsoever. Anyway, I'll let you guys get back to the video now. So future Nimble Thor, over and out. So what is my conclusion then on this game? Well, the way I see it is that it's just a huge shame that such an interesting concept and idea for a game gets dragged down by a monetization that forces us to grind for hundreds of hours, literally hundreds of hours, to unlock new characters or pay up being able to spend, you know, at the very least up to 200 US dollars for the things we actually want to get. Now with that said though, I think some of you will still be able to enjoy this game. Maybe some of you played the first game and you just really like the franchise. Maybe you just really like this unique idea of having a first person perspective in a tactical RPG game. If that's the case, it's definitely still worth checking out for you guys. It's a free to play game. You can go download it. Well, not right now, but as soon as it globally releases. And there is a chance, of course, that more content will be added to the game. There is a chance that we'll get ways of earning free premium currency by simply playing the game and being active in the game. And if that's the case, then I would definitely revisit this game later on as well. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And now it's time for the mobile gaming news of the day, which is interesting news from Finland, where Angry Birds developer Rovio has grown its quarterly revenue nearly 17% in comparison to last year, and even more interestingly, the company has no less than 14 games in development at the moment. Right now, 14 games in development at Rovio, while their next animated movie, The Angry Birds Movie 2, is scheduled for release later this summer as well. Now, I will of course keep a close eye on Rovio to see if they come out with any interesting new games, but are you guys still playing any of the games though? Let me know in the comment section down below, and until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.